protecting a VPN resource with Identity as a Service. You can integrate RADIUS applications with Identity as a Service to provide both first factor authentication and second factor authentication. But first, the following steps need to be completed before integration can be defined in IDAS. Install the configure your first factor authentication resource. This can be a RADIUS server or an external authentication resource. Next, install and configure the RADIUS appliance. Once your RADIUS appliance is routing traffic, we can begin the identification on the IDAS side. The first step on the IDAS side is to ensure we have a gateway installed. As we already do have one, let's just review the details that will be required for our integration. Click Gateway. Notice the RADIUS agent you can stop and start it from the square. For this example, we will create a new group. Only members of this group will have access to this application. In Members, Groups, add a new group, a group named VPN. Now we can define the application. Select Resources, Applications. Click the plus to define a new application. From the Add Application, scroll down to the Radius Integrations. The listed tiles represent the Radius and VPN integrations that have been tested and have technical integration guides available. These describe how to integrate Identity as a Service with your specific application. These guides are available from the Help menu. Administration Guide. In the Help menu, notice the listing of technical integration guides has a section for RADIUS and VPN integrations. In our example, we will use the generic RADIUS client to configure your virtual private network server for RADIUS authentication. The generic RADIUS client works with the Identity as a Service Gateway and its RADIUS agent. The Identity as a Service Gateway and RADIUS agent act as the RADIUS server in this configuration. Give the application a meaningful name and description. In the general settings, click Add next to the hosts to add the host name of the VPN server. The RADIUS agent receives a request on this host. The RADIUS agent on the gateway determines the RADIUS application the request is for based on the host name and port. In the port field, enter the port on which the RADIUS agent accepts messages. Just a reminder, do not use 8443 as it is reserved for the IDAS gateway. In the shared secret field, enter the shared secret that is used by your VPN server. This is the RADIUS secret shares between your VPN server and the RADIUS server. The shared secret value must match a shared secret in your RADIUS client. Click the arrow to select the RADIUS agent. This is a gateway we already have defined and running. In our environment, we will use the gateway we already have defined. Optional, from the Select RADIUS Attribute for IP Address drop-down list, select the RADIUS attribute that corresponds to your IP location. Set any custom values you wish for the queue and cache values. From the Character Set drop-down, select the character set used to decode and encode string values. Optional, select Log RADIUS Messages to enable RADIUS message logging. When enabled, messages for RADIUS agent are logged in the same file as the gateway logs. Authentication settings are optional. Enable Push Authentication Fallback if you want authentication to fall back to another authenticator in the event of a failure. When authenticating, the user will be asked to enter their second factor authenticator. When selected, after the user responds to the first factor challenge, they will be prompted to select their second factor authenticator. The list of available second factor authenticators is set by the resource rule. Select Required for incoming messages to include the message authenticator attribute for incoming messages and for outgoing messages. Indicate if Active Directory password authentication requests are handled by the same gateway instance that initiated the request. 
This requires that Active Directory password authentication and change requests that are initiated as part of the RADIUS authentication are handled by any gateway instance in the same gateway cluster that initiated it. If disabled, the request is handled by any gateway instance. Scrolling down to the response attributes, use this setting to configure RADIUS attributes to return information like the user's group information to the VPN server. Each attribute is added from the list, along with its type value. To return to the user's group membership, select Group. Optionally, configure the EAP settings to set up the application to use the EAP RADIUS authentication protocol. When enabled, authentication messages with EAP content are treated as EAP requests. The application can accept only EAP authentication requests. When disabled, incoming authentication requests are processed by the RADIUS application as a standard RADIUS authentication request, even if the request includes EAP content. In this case, the application can accept only standard RADIUS authentication requests. Select the EAP protocol from the drop-down list. Select Return MPPE keys to include the MPPE. This setting is enabled by default. Leave the minimum TLS version, maximum TLS version, and allow weak ciphers at the default settings unless you have an older VPN and need to configure these settings to allow older versions of TLS. Once defined, we can save the application definition. Now we can also define the resource rule for all of our users. In the resource rule, we can identify the VPN group will be the only users at the moment to use this application. If you want to adjust the types of authenticators available based on risk, you can define the factors here and set the relative risk. In our case, the risk factors will not be considered as we will only define one risk level, low. Scrolling down, we can set the authentication decisions for the low risk only leaving the other two categories as Deny Access. We will change the first factor to External Authentication. As a reminder, when you change the first factor to External, a message warns you about the use of No Password for VPN application access. Adjust the second factor to only allow for the software or hardware token, and save the resource rule. Back in the Resource Rules page, we now see the new RADIUS and VPN integration section with the new My Company VPN application and resource rule. Now we can test this access. In our tray, we have a VPN client already installed, and when we click it, a pop-up will ask us for the connection details. The first factor authentication will be required. Next, a soft token response is required. Once successful, the icon on the tray shows the connection. Please see our library of support content or contact our world-class support team any time of the day, no matter where you are, for more immediate assistance.